Miss Brooks manages to keep busy teaching English at Madison High School. But in spite of her preoccupation with her own subject, she's managed to find quite a bit of time lately to pursue the study of biology. Well, one thing is certain. I've spent more time pursuing the study of biology than the biology teacher has spent pursuing me. <laughs> anyway, I was pretty surprised last week when my landlady, Mrs. Davis, told me that Mr. Boynton had borrowed my copy of Rustan's Cyrano de Bergerac from our library. We were discussing it last Thursday morning while Mrs. Davis was getting breakfast ready. I can't understand it, Tommy. Cyrano is a very romantic play. Does Mr. Boynton read that kind of literature? I doubt it very much. Although he surprised me once before this when I saw a book on his desk called Come Fly With Me. That sounds like a very racing. That read, The Life and Times of an African Tsetse Fly. <laughs> well, maybe now that the weather's getting nicer, he'll warm up a bit. Remember the old saying, in the spring, a young man's fancy. Not Mr. Boynton. He's no fancier in the spring than he is in the winter. <laughs> oh, that must be Walter Denton to drive me to school. Come on in, Walter. The door's open. I'll be in the kitchen. Just call me if you want some breakfast. Breakfast? If I call, just stand guard over lunch and dinner. Oh, good morning, Walter. You're just in time for some breakfast. No, yeah, no, no, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'm really worried. It's about Harriet Conklin. She's been very cool to me lately. It's this poetry she's been getting. Poetry? From whom? Well, that's just the trouble. I don't know who from. You don't know from whom? I don't know from nothing. <laughs> Somebody's been sending her love lyrics like mad. I suspect that the sender of the notes works around the cafeteria. Why the cafeteria? Well, because yesterday, while Harriet wasn't looking, I switched the verse with her, and sure enough, tucked right in the middle of my chocolate eclair, Omar Khayyam. <laughs> At least I, I think it was Omar Khayyam. You mean you're not sure? Well, it was pretty gooey. That's so Mark I am, all right. And these are the main points of difference in the circulatory systems of cold and warm-blooded creatures. Well, uh, that'll be all for today. You'll excuse me, Mr. Boynton, but you asked me to wait after class. And... Oh, yes, Walter. About that note you were scribbling while you should have been listening to my lecture on the North American tree toad. Uh, hand it over. Oh, but, but, but Mr. Boynton, it, it's personal. I'm sorry, Walter. I've got to find out what it is that's so much more important to you than the North American tree toad. Well, you're all right, Mr. Boynton, but you won't learn much from this. Now, let's see. Oh, it's a poem. <clears throat> Tis but for you that my heart does beat. And over and over it does repeat. As it says your name, it twists like a lariat just because your name is Harriet. <laughs> well, Mr. Boynton, now you know it's Harriet Conklin that's more important to me than a North American tree toad. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to embarrass you, Walter. I think our esteemed principal's daughter is a fine girl. And I'm, I'm quite fond of poetry myself. You, Mr. Boynton? Yes, me. There are things in my life besides toad, too. Really? What? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, well, one of my favorite bits of verse is quite similar to the one you've written. It goes, Your name hangs in my heart like a bell tongue, and evermore with love I tremble. And the bell swings, and then your name rings out, and everything you do lives in my heart. Well, Walter, what do you think of it? if you ask me. Not at all, Walter. That's one of the loveliest passages in Rostand's Cyrano de Bergerac. You'd be surprised how efficacious those lines can be. I sure would. Uh, here, I'll write it down for you. Uh, I'm sure this will be a great help in your pursuit of the fair Harriet. Oh, you certainly have beautiful handwriting, Mr. Boynton. Oh, gosh, Harriet practically swoons every time you write the questions on the blackboard. <laughs> well, that's very flattering, Walter. Uh, there you are. Oh, I sure appreciate this, Mr. Boynton. And gosh, after all the trouble you've gone through already, I, I hate to ask you, but... Well, 
If this works, will you be my best man? I have sent for you, Miss Brooks, for two reasons. Yes, Mr. Conklin? First, I want you to pick up your... Not yet. (laughs) Well, here it is. I found it, Mr. Conklin. Well, good for you. (laughs) Now, the second thing I want you to do is to change my daughter Harriet's seat in your class. Oh, why, sir? What's wrong with her present location? She's right across the aisle from a case of walking arrested development called Walter Denton. <laughs> Their very proximity has fostered an infantile romance, culminating in Harriet receiving a series of mushy, ridiculous poems. But, Mr. Conklin, Walter didn't send those poems. Just He's... move him away from my daughter or vice versa. But, Mr. Conklin, the poems... The only is... poem I'm interested in, Miss Brooks, goes... Yours not to reason why, yours but to do or die. I believe in private enterprise myself. Good day, Miss Brooks. But, Mr. Conklin... I have spoken. Yes, Master, I go. When I left Mr. Conklin's office, I headed for my classroom again. Hello, Miss Brooks. Oh, hello, Harriet. Guess what? I just found another poem smuggled into my history book. And this one is the loveliest one of all. And the most important, too, because I know who said it. I know at last who my secret admirer has been. Look, Olivia. I mean, Harriet. <laughs> How do you know? By his handwriting. Every time I see it on the blackboard, I practically swoon. I've got to let him know I know who he is. Well, how are you going to do that? In a very subtle manner, Miss Brooks. I'll just give him back his poem without saying a word. Then he'll know that I know. Yeah, but Harriet, your father doesn't admire your secret admirer. Oh, he will. I wish I had an envelope to put this note in, though. I don't want to lose it before I meet him. Yeah. You can use this envelope, Harriet. Wait till I take out these report cards. There you are. Now, oh, I'd better be getting into my room, Harriet. I've got to sort these cards before my next class. Very well, Miss Brooks. And, Miss Brooks? Yes? Isn't it love a wonderful feeling? <laughs> it's Dan. That is. Andy. <laughs> Poor Miss Brooks. In love with the one who loves me. But that's right, I guess. The eternal triangle. Well, good morning, Harriet. Have you seen Miss Brooks? Mr. Mr. Boynton. Yeah, Mr. Boynton. Oh, why, Mr. Boynton? Oh, but, Harry, just a minute. What's this envelope? For Miss Brooks. Oh, I guess she wants me to give it to her. <laughs> Funny how kids act sometimes. Come in. You busy, Miss Brooks? Oh, no, Mr. Boynton. I was just sorting these cards. I just dropped in to tell you how much I'm enjoying the book I borrowed. Of course, what was coaching the basketball team and all, I haven't finished it. But there are several passages in it that really remind me of my youth. <laughs> I was a romantic kid, all right. Them were the days. <laughs> now, you might not believe this, but I even wrote poetry. <laughs> Isn't that silly? I don't think it's silly at all. But I'm still a little amazed at your interest in such amorous literature. Maybe you've underestimated me, Miss Brooks. Underestimated you? Yes. I. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. This envelope. It's for you. Well, so long, Miss Brooks. But, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> what is all this about? What's in here? Your name hangs in my heart like a bell's tongue, and evermore with love I tremble. And the bell swings, and then your name rings out. And everything you do lives in my heart. Why, Mr. Boynton, you underestimated dog, you. Well, lunch period finally arrived, and I hurried into the cafeteria just as Mr. Boynton got there. This, of course, was pure coincidence. The same pure coincidence which has occurred in threat to boycott this cafeteria last week seems to have done some good, doesn't it, Mr. Boynton? Yes, indeed. They've even put flower pots around on the windowsills. I've just ordered some for my biology lab. They certainly do a lot to relieve the drabness of a schoolroom. So do you. 
I mean, uh, aren't flower pots a pretty expensive luxury for a teacher? Oh, they don't cost anything at all, Miss Brooks. Mr. Carson gets them through the school nursery. You just tell him how many you want, he signs the requisition, and that's all there is to it. You ought to get a dozen or so for your room. I suggest you request the small size pot, Miss Brooks. You'll be surprised how a few flowers will brighten things up. Well, frankly, when I was in your room this morning, it seemed rather cold. Cold? For a biologist, you're a pretty bad judge of temperature. <laughs> but if it's flower pots you want, it's flower pots you'll get. <laughs> I would like a dozen small flower pots for my window sills. Come in. Oh, it's me, Stretch Snodgrass. You gotta help me, Miss Brooks. I got a problem. What's your problem, Stretch? Well, as you know, Walter Denton is my best friend. And I know he's gone on Harriet Conklin. And even though she's my best friend's girl, I can't help it. I'm gone on her. <laughs> even Mr. Boynton has noticed how it's affecting me. Well, why don't you tell Harriet how you feel about her? I'm sure Mr. Conklin would welcome the change. Well, I don't want to go with Mr. Conklin. <laughs> hey, you see, Miss Brooks, for quite a while now, I've been smuggling little notes to her every day without signing them. Oh, so you're the one. What one? The one who's been slipping Omar Khayyam into Harriet's eclairs. Yeah, that's right. I lost a book somewhere, so I had to make up today's poem myself. That's why I came to you, Miss Brooks. I want you to hear it and tell me if it's okay. All right, Jack, go ahead. <clears throat> to Harriet. Oh, I love the dear silver that ain't in your hair. And the brow that ain't furrowed or wrinkled with care. I kiss the dear fingers, not toil-worn for me. Oh, I love you, dear Harriet. Well, what's the next line? Oh, I, I couldn't think of another original one, so I just put down Mother McCree. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what's your honest opinion? My honest opinion, Stretch, is that it's pretty abominable. No kidding? Hey, that's the very first poem I ever wrote. <laughs> that's amazing. I know poets who've written for years without getting that abominable. <laughs> Look, Stretch, if you want to make a hit with Harriet and get her mind off Walter, which will get Mr. Conklin's mind off me, you'll have to give her a different type of poem. What do you mean, Miss Brooks? Well, something like... Uh, Hey, I've got one right here. There, it's all written out for you. <clears throat> Let's see. Your name hangs in my heart like a bell's tongue, and evermore with love I tremble. Miss Brooks, what's a bell's tongue? It's right in front of the bell's console. <laughs> Read the rest of it. And the bell swings, and then your name rings out, and everything you do lives in my heart. Well, what do you think of it, Stretch? Hey, it's keen. What I like about it is just the right size to fit into a jelly donut. <laughs> I'll go right to the cafeteria now. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Stretch. I'd like you to do something for me first, if you don't mind. Well, sure, Miss Brooks. What is it? Well, take this requisition to Mr. Conklin's office, will you? Well, sure, right away. And no detours now. I want those flower pots as soon as possible. Okay. And thanks for the poem, Miss Brooks. Oh, but it was that snowdrop. Oh, here he is. Gosh, Shirley, you're just the one I wanted to see. Hey, Harriet, even though you're Walter's girl, I mean, well, I can't help it. I just got to tell you how I feel about you. Harriet, I think you're abominable. What? I, I felt it right... I walk you down... Oh, hiya, Stretch. Hello, Walter. I, I can't talk to you now. I got to hurry and deliver a message to Mr. Cochran. So long, Harriet. Bye, everybody. Well, what's the matter with him? I don't know. He seems awfully mixed up. He told me I was abominable, and then he gave me this note. A note? What does it say? I don't quite understand it. It says, I would like a dozen small flower pots for my window sill. Ask Miss Brooks to step into my office immediately, please. Uh, now then, Stretch, you're positive Miss Brooks told you to give this note to me? Yes, Mr. Cartman. I see. Uh, that will be all, Stretch. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go, Mr. Cartman. 
Your name hangs in my heart like a bell's tongue. And evermore with love I tremble. Now, really. Come in. You sent for me, Mr. Conklin? Uh, yes, Miss Brooks, I did. Uh, sit down, won't you? Thank you. Uh, Miss Brooks, I don't know quite how to begin. I I received your note, of course, and, well, I never suspected you felt the way you do. Well, I did decide rather recently, Mr. Conklin. But, Miss Brooks, you know Mrs. Conklin so well. What do you suppose she'd say? Well, don't you think she'd like the idea? <laughs> like the idea? Mr. Conklin, aren't you exaggerating the importance of my little note? It isn't as if I'm asking for the moon. All I want is some little ones. <laughs> little ones? Oh, yes. I've got as much right to them as anybody else has got. If a dozen is too many, I'll settle for six. <laughs> and if you don't mind, I'd like to have them by the end of the day. <laughs> You've been working very hard. And I know conditions here are too good. Well, conditions aren't too good in any school, Mr. Conklin. That's one of the reasons I want them. Uh, uh, just let me review this request, Miss Brooks. You say you want six little ones by the end of the day? That's right. I'd like to string them along my window, Phil. <laughs> string them along your window, Phil? Well, that's better than letting them lie around the nursery, isn't it? What are you talking about? Flower pots. I want you to sign the requisition for me. Requisition? But I didn't get any requisition. Here's what Snodgrass brought me. Your name hangs in my heart like a bell's tongue. Excuse me, Jenny, but there's been a terrible mistake. What are you talking about, Harriet? And why aren't you in class, Benton? Well, it was such a mistake, Mr. Conklin. Oh, I guess I got excited. Uh, pardon me, but the door was open, Mr. Conklin, and I... Good point. What is this, a convention? I heard you were called up on the carpet, Miss Brooks, so I thought I'd come by and see if there's anything I can do. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Mr. Boynton. It's about the poem. What is is going on here? What's all this poem nonsense anyway? Don't you see, Daddy? Strip gave you the poem he was planning to give me by mistake. Yeah, but he wasn't the only one that gave Harriet a poem. I did, too. I put one in her history book. What? I've had about enough of this. Clear out of my office, all of you. Stretch here. Take this. This... Oh, I'm with Harriet gave it to me. Here. Walter gave it to me. Here. Mr. Boynton gave it to me. Here. Thank you, Walter. Oh, that was fun. Let's go around again. And... <laughs> and the first one that misses gets a date with Bridie Murphy. <laughs>